You know what this makes me think of? It's like in those cartoons where they're like mixing up some maniacal like formula and they put all, they dump in all this stuff and then they take out this tiny dripper and they're like, squeeze it real slow. This little drip just hangs there and it drops down and it's like, oh and like a little tiny mushroom cloud comes off of it. It's the vibe I'm getting here. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's me, Austin, and you're watching Trying to Be Hot Ones. This is a show with lukewarm questions and potentially hotter wings. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Cameron Birch. Hello. He's one of the century's hairiest dad bods. Guilty. From longboarding to belly dancing, from racing exotics to being exotic, please welcome Cameron to the show. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. How do you do with hot sauce? I love it. Do you? Sometimes. Depends well, on the occasion. Like, how hot do you I'm probably not going to love it tonight. No? I mean, I put sriracha on pretty much everything. Sriracha on everything. So Sriracha on everything. Here. I don't know. I mean, sriracha I mean, is kind of a tasty spice. I on your gauge of 1 to 11, where would Diablo you Diablo sauce yourself? does nothing to me. So here. Damn it. Sriracha on everything. <laughs> I mean, do you ever... <clears throat> If you go into Buffalo Wild Wings, you, are you ever venturing into like the medium or the wild? I go uh, standard I, buffalo. Standard buffalo. <laughs> yep. All right, well today we're going to be challenging our tongues as well as our wit in this oh episode boy. of Trying to Be Hotter Ones. Hmm. <laughs> <gasps> <gasps> Time to get to know you, Cam. There's oh. a lot of questions here that I don't know about you, and I'm excited to get to know you. Oh boy, you're gonna learn some things today. That's the goal. Jersey barn fire from Indian summer, huh? Cheers me, sir. Oh. Breaking breaded chicken with you. Sweet. It is sweet. Now you've always been an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. So I, I gotta it. know. Years ago, you started a longboarding company. Mm -hmm. Where did the passion for longboards come into play oh, and, the, and the beginning <laughs> of FM? So, good times, good old FM Boarding Co. It still lives on in my heart. And that all started in high school. Me and my buddy Casey, we wanted to start our own clothing brand. You know, we wanted to do something different. We wanted to design our own clothes, whatnot. And uh, so we decided to put together a, some sort of brand. And at this time, we were skate, we were skaters. Normal skateboards though, like nothing extreme. Uh, but we weren't very good at it, like by any means. We'd go to the skate park, go up and down ramps, but we basically ollie, maybe almost kickflip, and that was it. Like nothing at all. We just could not get the hang of it. But we were still skaters, and so, so we we were all we were sitting together one night, and we were trying to think of like a brand. We're like, what what like embodies us? And at this time. We were very much like, we don't want people to tell us what to do or be in our business or bug us. We were teenagers. And so, so it just came to light from a camping trip we were on where uh, people would come and tell us what to do and they'd walk away and be like, meh, F them. <laughs> like, we just didn't want to do it. And so like that happened. And then we're, when we're sitting here one night, having a sleepover even, chilling and trying to figure out the name of it, we're like, F them. Yeah, that embodies our very attitude towards people right now. And we can even spell it something unique. E-F-U-M. F-U-M. Perfect. And it just came to life. And then later on, we actually designed an acronym from it that stood for, F-U-M stood for Evolved from Unique Minds. Awesome. Now, where did longboards come into play? Oh, like I said, we sucked at skating. Longboards started to become popular. I got one for my birthday, and it just loved it ever since. I was way better at longboarding than I was skating. <laughs> Sweet Heat Gourmet. Cheers. Now ever since I can recall, you've had a deep fear for mannequin doll heads. <laughs> Where did this fear begin? <clears throat> Sorry, that was a big nugget. Childhood. I always hated dolls. I always hated mannequins. I hated any anything that was made to look like a human, but it wasn't alive. Hated it. 
I don't like it. They stare at you at night, sitting on their dirty little shelves, creeping all over you, looking you up and down with their demon eyes. Hate it. And uh, I remember once I saw the preview to Chucky, and it gave me nightmares, terrified me. So it was the show the Never catalyst? saw the movie. Okay. Never saw it, but it freaked me out. And then I remember watching Goosebumps with the ventriloquist dummy, you know, Night of the Living Dummy, famous, infamous, mm -hmm. I would oh, even yeah. say. Hated it. And they, they just creep me out. I just don't like them at all. Well, then, fast forward to uh, uh, teenage adult times. I'm friends with Chris and Lisa, two of my really good friends. Well, Lisa was going to beauty school for a little bit. She had two of these stupid mannequin heads in her house. They thought it was a fun little game to just hide it in many different places throughout the house mm. to terrify me. So oh, I, I, I remember. You remember, I, one time I fell asleep on the floor, I woke up and it was looking at me, it was just right there, screamed, turned my head to the other side, boom, there was the other one. It was a really good joke, but it freaked me out. That wasn't even as scary as the time I had to go to the bathroom, I went down to their basement bathroom. They had hid one of them on like some boxes in the shower, which already is another scary thing. Nobody wants to know what's in the shower. But the scary thing, they pulled the curtain just so one eye was peeking out while I was taking a deuce. Luckily I was on the toilet because it scared the <laughs> crap right out of me. Stupid demon dolls. And they, they've used it many times on me. So they've just perpetuated the fear of it. Awesome. The worst. Friendly fire. Friendly fire. Guava habanero. I got a fat nug, so I'm only. You got a the happy. fat nug this time. I'll take a. I'll take a halfy. Mm. What would you consider the holy grail of your Lego collection? Mm. Probably Voltron. <laughs> yeah, he's about this tall. Big old Voltron set. He's got a sword and shield and everything, and. You can take him apart into the five lions. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. A Lego set that comes apart into other things. Yeah. Impressive. Five lions. Two for his legs, two for his arms, one for his body and head. It's a big fatty. It's pretty dope though. I'm really proud of it. I love that thing. It's on display in my house constantly. <laughs> <laughs> the one Lego set that I don't let my wife shove away into a bin. Okay. Proudly on display. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good. Xana organic hot sauce. Well, that last one had guavo in it. Zesty and vibrant with garlic, habanero, and carrot. <laughs> <laughs> Who's putting carrots in hot sauce? <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Doing another happy. Mm-hmm. Mm. Very tasty. Where's the heat? No heat at all. Okay, come back down a little bit. Are they teasing us? <clears throat> now, big to differ. From One Punch Man to Gundam, <laughs> many don't know that you're a huge anime fan. I mean, I wouldn't say huge. I mean, I'm a, I'm a decently sized fan. If you had nothing else to do and were in a binging mood, what would you throw on? Ooh, nothing else on in a binging mood. It'd be. It would either be My Hero Academia, which is, it's, it's a good show. You gotta check it out. Okay. It's a lot of fun. Superheroes, powers, fun stuff. <laughs> a real coming of age story. Okay. Uh, it'd be My Hero Academia, as well as, One Punch Man is so good. I would say Gundam Wing is one I haven't watched in a while. That's the one that got me into anime. Okay. This is back in junior high. It was on Toonami, remember Toonami? Did you ever watch that nope. ever? Cartoon Network? Nope. Okay then. <laughs> but uh, it's basically my childhood dream was that I could like love robots. And I thought, how cool it would it be if I could like pilot a robot? Oh yeah. Right? Mech Warrior was that. huge back then. Exactly. Well then Power comes, Rangers. Uh, along, exactly. Megazord Galore. I freaking yeah. love that show. Then along comes Gundam Wing. This is like exactly what I dreamt of. It's a, it's a big old robot piloted by somebody sitting like right in the torso and they straight up 
like our fight with laser swords, giant beam cannons, they're in outer space, they're on Earth. Freaking just fulfilled my dreams on the beautiful screen. I learned to set the VCR so I could record it every day it was on. A little five minutes before and five minutes after. I had it down! <laughs> I was a guru of that VCR. The DVR before the DVR. Exactly. Lucky dog. It looks a little, little old brown doggy. This one's thick. It's, it's a little thick. It's a little fat and <clears throat> a little thicky, little thick boy. Cheers. Here we go. Mm. I'm waiting for that kick. No kick? <laughs> Wait. No kick. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's no secret, you're a little bald up top. Just a tad. But I gotta know, when you're washing your face, how high up do you go? <laughs> I mean, it depends. Okay. Okay. If I've let it grow a little shaggy, but you know, I haven't trimmed it in a while, stops about here. Okay. That's my face, to there. <laughs> it's where the hair starts. If I trim it up, it's all face. <laughs> okay, good to know. You save money on shampoo and body wash, as well as face wash. I'm telling you, I haven't, I haven't bought a new shampoo bottle in probably like two years. Wow, that's impressive. I know. <laughs> it's pretty great. <laughs> Oh boy! I almost forgot which one I poured it on. <laughs> We're finding that heat. It's coming. Now, growing up, you always touted that you had a little bit of rebel blood in you. Oh yeah. Tell me about your running with the cops down in Beaver, Utah. <laughs> Good old Beaver, Utah. I hate that place. <laughs> <laughs> So, <clears throat> me and my dear friend Jigby went on a road trip to California. And we went in his car, which was this dinky little Nissan Sentra white with like an upgraded exhaust system. It was wicked loud. Super obnoxious. This thing sounded like it could go fast. It did not deliver most of the time. <laughs> Unless you were going downhill. Well, anyways, we were coming home, and we were just trying to make good time. We didn't want to be in the car anymore. It was a long drive. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jigby is on my butt about going faster. I'm already going, like, 90. He's like, go faster. I'm like, no, man, we're getting caught. We're getting in trouble. He's like, go faster. And so I'm like, fine, whatever. So I speed up, right? I I'm pretty sure I got, I'm pretty sure I only got up to, like, 95-ish, 96, and I saw a cop sitting in the in the middle like sitting in the median right mm -hmm. and i let off the gas real quick and like we're somewhat going the flow of traffic i guess kind of <laughs> the traffic's way ahead of us officer <laughs> but uh he sees me doesn't move i'm like oh man there was a cop okay we're good nothing like he didn't come after us we're good we slowed down in time boy was i wrong because coming down the opposite direction is another cop car this dude sees us peels into the median, flips a freaking Yui, jumps on the road and comes after us. What? Like hard. Dude was pissed. Okay. Pulls us over. Did not give me the time of day. He was mad. He's like, do you have any idea how fast you were going? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> he didn't even like, banter, he's like, give me license, registration, all this stuff. He's handed, like, I'm handing him the stuff. He, he just gives us a ticket. He freaking wrote the ticket for going 101, which is 26 over the speed limit, which put us in the bracket for $375 <laughs> to freaking Beaver, this podunk town that says that they have the best water. Stupid thing, but luckily, Jigby, knowing that he uh, egged on the beast that got us caught, he's like, I'll pay half. <laughs> So he helped me out. We sent a check to stupid Beavers City Hall or whatever. Paid off the dumbest ticket I ever got. Now I've heard that's also not the first time you've been in trouble with the police. 
No. I've heard another time you were detained by police and your father had to come pick you up. <laughs> Where did you get this information? And I gotta know, <clears throat> how did your mom react? Oh my gosh. I. Wow, I'll be honest, I don't even remember my mom like being mad or anything. I just remember the fear of knowing my dad was coming. <laughs> oh my gosh, what did my mom do? But give us the story, what happened? Okay, so, <laughs> so you know, the good old teenage years in Colorado. Good times, good times were had there. Um, one night we're hanging out, me and my friends, we're cruising around and we start out the night by going around the block and we we ding well <laughs> we left a flaming bag of poop on a guy's doorstep he was like a mortal enemy some old dude didn't even know him he was like the mortal enemy of my friend that we were hanging out with so we leave a flaming da a bog, uh, bag of dog poop on his doorstep ring the bell run and hide nobody shows up so we're like yeah whatever let's go somewhere else we proceed to just cruise around at night I'm doing whatever. We're hiding from cops. Just careful, cause. Yeah, careful around the eyes. What? Careful around the eyes. Oh my gosh, did I get something in my eyes? No. There was something in my eye. I'm gonna use this part of my hand. So we're cruising around, hiding from cops, because it was after curfew. Can't get caught for that. Well, then we decide to go down more into like the downtown part of the city. Lights are on, but all the businesses are closed or whatever. And uh, we're just cruising around killing time, whatever. We uh, decide that me and me and another friend were gonna go chase a goose, try to catch it. The rest of our friends went a different way. Well, we lost them. So we're like, all right, well, they'll probably meet us back at home. So we decided to head back home. Well, on our way back home, good old ghetto bird comes out. That's what we call the police helicopter. Okay. Ghetto bird comes out. We hear him chopping around. We see a spotlight going down the street that we're on. We immediately just run, dive under a car, and we're hiding there, waiting for him to pass. He passes, kind of cruises down. We get up, we start running up the street. Well, we look back, he's flipping around, coming back up the street. We go hide again under some bushes, some trees and whatnot. And we're, we're, to us, this is just a silly game. We're like, <laughs> hiding from the cops, like, uh, they're just out here. Like, we had no actual thought that they were looking for us specifically. We just were hiding. You know, it's, you're teenagers, that's what you do. We get back to the house. And uh, our friends aren't there yet. And we're like, what the heck, where'd they go? You know, we none of us had cell phones at the time. And uh, finally, like 10, 15 minutes later, they show up and they come running downstairs and they find us like, there you are. And we're like, what? And they're like, man, after you guys ditched us, we got caught by the police. They uh, told us we were out past curfew. We told them that our friends had gone down by the riverbank to catch a goose. And they freaking called out the ghetto bird on you. And we're like, wait, they were looking for us? That was actually us? Well, we hid from them the whole way up the street. They couldn't ever see us. Well, lo and behold, 10 minutes later, we need to knock at the door. Ding, ding, ding. Freaking two police officers knew my friend by name, because fool was a hooligan. <laughs> and uh, they pull us all outside and they're like, you went over to this house, you guys let a flaming bag of dog poop on his doorstep. Apparently the guy came out long after we left and called the cops because he just knew it was our friend. Dude, those, those cops were laying into us. We're all like, we're all like 16, 17. We're all like crying on the lawn. They're just, he's screaming at, we can charge you with arson. We can charge you with this. We're like, oh, me, me too. Um, so they, you know, they call our parents. My dad pulls up, and my brother, my dad and my brother. They pull up, my dad gets out, starts screaming at me, just like, how could you, what are you doing, you idiot? Like, flipping out on me, like, I'm so sorry. Like, just freaking out, right? Get in the car, cry all the way home. Um, I'll be honest, I don't remember if my mom, like, I don't know if I was just so, like, going crazy, because everyone was yelling at me. I can't remember if my mom was, I think she was nice to me. I can't remember what happened. But uh, uh, it wasn't until like months later that I found out that on the way there, my dad and my brother were laughing and making fun of me. As soon as they got there, my dad's like, Ch shut up, shut up, I'm gonna put on a show. He got out and screamed at me just to show the cops he was gonna discipline me so they would leave us alone. And he thought it was funny. 
Born to Hula. Really? <clears throat> Starting to hit. I told bit. you it was gonna start here. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I've heard stories of you running errands with your father in the car with no talking, just music. Oh yeah. Just down, old car. What kind of car? Uh, most, well, there's been a few. It was most likely the uh, 1985 SS El Camino. Nice. Now, what song would you say brings back the most memories of those moments spent in the ch in the car with your father? Basically, anything on was it Era the Eagle 103.5. <laughs> Any song from that station, because literally every time we were in the car, we'd throw on some classic rock <laughs> and just, just a lot vibe. of our viewers are just gonna vibe. Know. A lot of our viewers aren't going to know 103.5. That's but. true. I mean, everyone's got it. Everyone in the country of the grand old US of A has a station that just plays classic rock. It's probably the Arrow, the Eagle, uh, something in that genre, you know what I mean? But, classic uh, rock, are you talking like Billy Joel, I'm Journey? I'm talking like everything, Sticks. man. Like Sticks, Kansas, Foreigner, Led Zeppelin. Um, the freaking Aerosmith. Is there any one song in particular that really rings There, out? There's one. This was actually very, that's weird. I was thinking about this just this morning. Uh, there was a very sentimental moment. It, it was very interesting. So yeah, when, for whatever reason, when we're in the car, <laughs> me and my dad just don't talk. We just vibe, man. We're just like cruising, letting the music play through us, looking out the window, whatever. And, um, this song, uh, Cats, I think it's Cats Cradle, or the Cats in the Cradle. It's a, it's this mm -hmm. classic rock song. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, I know exactly. Cats in the Cradle and the Silver Spoon. Mm -hmm. That one? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a very sad, but poetic song. It's about how this father has his, you know, has his son. He's busy trying to make a living for him, so he doesn't have a lot of time for his son, unfortunately. And then the son grows up, has his own son, and then the father wants to spend more time with the son. And the son then is like, hey dad, I'm sorry, I don't have time. So it like, it's just kind of this like flip. And it's just really sad. It's a really good thing. And I'm sitting there listening to it. I was only like, I don't know, like 16 or 17. And I'm listening to the song and I'm like, yeah. I was like, dad, I wanna be just like you. And he like almost immediately cut me off. He's like, no. And I was like, and like, it freaked me out. I was like, well, what do you mean no? And he's like, I want you to be better than me. And I just start freaking crying my eyes out. Well, it was like one of the most inspirational, loving things that he's like said. And it was just this like beautiful moment for me. And it, it'll stay with me forever. Like it's, it's so silly, so simple, but it was such a profound impact on my life. Mm. With that, I mean, I, I think you, I, I don't know if it's hot, this hot sauce? <laughs> Do you get some in your eye? A little bit in your eye? A little bit. Guys, wash, wash, wash your hands. Yeah, wash no, your hands. Just don't touch it. Just don't touch it. Yeah, yeah. Getting serious. Oh, snap. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, we got some tangy. <clears throat> Yep, that. that was a steep curve. I don't know, it, yeah, it hit something. Cool. Now. Scorpion. It's, it's. Okay. It's fairly obvious that you're a superhero fan. I do love my superheroes. Who would you place on your Mount Rushmore of superheroes? Oh, man. Now, are we talking one? One side? Marvel versus DC or any? Any. Oh, boy. <coughs> that's, a, that's hot. That's a that's a little spice boy. Ah, nice, refreshing. Ah. How many is on Mount Rushmore? Four. <clears throat> Four. Ah. You know, I got X Men was kind of one of my first loves when it comes to superheroes. So I probably won't put Wolverine up there. And Colossus. You don't know. He's a little, he's a little lesser known, but he's one of my favorites. Dude's a stud. He's got a great moral compass. Yeah, yeah. And he turns himself into a giant steel-covered <clears throat> man and just crushes everything. Love it. And I think I definitely I throw up Thor. Thor is someone I've come to love, especially through the 
MCU. Now, is that due to Chris Hemsworth or not? I think Chris Hemsworth's portrayal and the attention given to Thor have definitely like solidified that. Because, I mean, he wasn't one I really paid attention to before. There, weren't, there wasn't much. Unless you were reading comics, you didn't see Thor a lot. So that, Chris Hemsworth, his portrayal, the Thor in the movies, and the fact that I'm real, real into the mythology kind of made that a, a, a top choice of mine. And a fourth? I'd probably put... I'll have to go with Batman. It's always ah, between... I knew it. It's always between Batman and Iron Man, but Batman is, again, one of my earliest, like, okay. favorite superheroes. Like, when I was a kid, I had Batman toys, I had a Batman cape. Like, I was all about Batman. <laughs> so, Batman's gotta go up there. Alright. But I'm talking, like, OG, like, cartoon Batman, who had that that iconic voice that he also has in the video games. That voice is Batman. You know what I mean? Deal. What is that, a goblin? Thunder juice? A little sweaty. <sighs> Flavor's nice. <coughs> I gotta know. Boom goes the dynamite. If you hit yourself and it hurts, are you weak or are you strong? A little bit of both. Right? Because oh. I mean, you know how strong you are. So you gotta hit yourself harder so you can feel it. But if it hurts, does that make you weak? This is, this is a difficult thing to think about. <laughs> <sighs> no. <laughs> no, because you're strong. <laughs> Just because it hurts doesn't mean it hurts. Okay. You know? It can hurt someone else a lot more. Exactly. Starting to hurt to talk. Uh huh. Ah. Uh. Oh. I feel like my lip is sweating. <laughs> oh, why does air make it hurt more? Pain apple burns and McGoy. Pain apple pepper sauce. <sighs> pain apple, pain apple pen. Pain apple pepper sauce. Pain apple, pain apple. Pineapple! I have, we are sweating profusely. It's gonna get worse. Cheers. Oh, <laughs> Talking with some friends, there's been a lot of talk about fancy clothing. I gotta know, what's the difference between a tuxedo and a tuxedo boy? <laughs> <laughs> tuxedo boys wear it way better. Okay. They take advantage of the two-day rental that they, you know, dropped a couple hundred on. Good old Tuxedo Boys, what a throwback. There's a piece of footage I wish I could find. So, picture this, senior prom. Uh-huh. You, you, you went to a senior prom, right? Oh yeah, uh -huh. two of them. Those tuxedos aren't cheap, especially for, uh, you know, a teenager's salary. <clears throat> exactly. So, me and my friends, we decided that the rental shouldn't go to waste on just one night. So the day before prom, we threw on our tuxes and we just went out on the town. We went to grocery stores for no reason. We rode carts in, you know, parking lots. Um, cruised around in my Chevy Astro van, 1989, two-tone gray, thin red, thin red line, lots of stickers. Almost got in a fight. Straight up almost got in a fight. Turn around, we turned this corner, right? Okay, picture this, Astro Van. You got six, five or six dudes in it, all decked out in tuxedos. I went all out. I had a freaking cane, top hat, and the dopest white and black shiny shoes you've ever seen in your life. I came talking to him, my tongue stopped working. <laughs> uh, we freaking turn a corner, wave at some kids, couple dudes 
they immediately give us the bird. We don't like that. Tuxedo boys don't stand for that crap. We slam on the brakes, throw in reverse, peel it out backwards, park it, <laughs> and again, picture this, sliding door on an astroam, throws open, <laughs> three dudes, three or four dudes in tuxedos just pile out, two more from the front seats, and we're just like, what was that? <laughs> We tried to intimidate this kid, him, his friend, and some girl. We're like, really? We tried to, we tried to wave to you, give you a, give you a hello, and you treat us with the finger. You think that's cool? Kid's like, kid looks at his friend. He's like, give it to me, bro. He's like, no, no, man, no. He's like, give it to me. His friend passes him a freaking knife. Dude was gonna pull a knife on us. I was like, oh, you wanna play that? I go back to my van. I pulled out a cat bar about this long. If you don't know what a cat bar is, solid piece of metal with a point on one end and a hook on the other. And I'm like, you wanna go? <laughs> and he straight up like put it away. He's like, no, man. I'm like, that's what I thought. <laughs> tuxedo boys out. I said that and we got the car and we took off. You peeled down the street. said tuxedo boys out. Oh yeah, dude. That guy wasn't gonna say jack crap after that. There's no making fun of us. We won. <laughs> we had footage of this. We made a small video. It disappeared. We have no idea what happened to it. We'll see if you can find it for us. I just, for this just video. don't even know where to look. So I have a question. Why did you have a cat hook in your car? I had a lot of things in my van. <laughs> I literally had something for every occasion. Now we're on the last one. And it's this just one isn't even in a bottle. It's a friggin'. You know what this makes me think of? It's like in those cartoons where they're like mixing up some maniacal like formula and they put all, they jump in all this stuff and then they take out this tiny dripper and they're like, squeeze it real slow. This little drip just hangs there and it drops down and it's like, oh and like a little tiny mushroom cloud comes off of it. It's the vibe I'm getting here. I didn't even know my eye sockets could sweat. My back and my neck is like running sweat. Now it's tradition around here to put a little dab on the last wing. And uh, because, well, we dabbed every single wing, <laughs> it's definitely tradition. <laughs> but the goal here is three drops. Three drops. And apparently, none of them have been that small. It's quite painful. I am very nervous about this one. <sighs> what is this? Test batch. It's a freaking test batch. <laughs> I don't even know this was approved by the FDA. Ignition point. It's about to go down. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a child safety lock cap on it. And we're on the last and final wing. We have reached the tippy top of Mount Doom. With your mind melting and your mouth ablaze. You're a great philosopher with a great moral compass. <laughs> What would you say is the most important life lesson you have ever learned? Oh! That's hot. Most important life lesson I've ever learned. Yeah. Mm. That's a deep one. I don't even want to take a look yet. <clears throat> ha! <coughs> I felt like someone uh, <coughs> it's in the throat now. It feels like someone shoved a hot needle inside my tongue. Oh, it's hot. Ow! Ah, it's like shitting on it. Ugh. I'm trying to compose myself because I'm the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The most important life lesson. <sighs> If you think it's gonna hurt, it's probably gonna. <laughs> and the lesson I learned this in was when I, uh, one day, oh my gosh. <clears throat> I opened the freezer looking for some food. And this massive frozen steak just fell right out of the freezer, headed straight for my bare foot. I dodged it, quick as a flash. Right? Out of the woods. Not this guy. My mind goes, huh. I wonder what that would have felt like. 
I kid you not, I picked it back up, held it to the same height, stuck out my foot. I dropped that frozen steak right on my foot. <laughs> I tell you right now, it freaking hurt. It hurt real bad. <clears throat> not only did it hurt my foot, it hurt my pride. Because my dad was watching <laughs> over the railing of the stairs, didn't know he was there. He stands up laughing his head's up, head off, goes, you are an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, I will never live it down. <clears throat> if you think it hurts, it probably does. Fantastic job, you've cleared the table, one through 11. <sighs> now we've got nothing left to do except roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, that camera, this camera. Tell us what you got going on in your life. Oh, life, life's busy, folks. We got a, I got a vlog with the fam. Life's a birch. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. A lot of good stuff on there. Positive vibes. Working on my clothing company. We'll live like titans, huh? Oh, man. Got a podcast I just started with my buddies. It's called Fives of Crowd. Check it out. Right here on YouTube. You'll love it. Oh, gosh. Other than that, just, just living life and hating my mouth. Oh, gosh. Good pause. <laughs> pause. <laughs> Hold. Now, you've always been a little bit of an entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> my word eludes you. I can never say this stupid word. <laughs>